she's an actress, radio journalist, and hospital clown, and uh, she really is good with the entertaining section, so I would say we just chill back and relax. <laughs> It looks good. Okay. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to see everyone. And I'm very excited to give this talk today on mystery. And yes, when I was first asked to give this talk, I was thinking, hmm, mystery, that's a little bit abstract. With everything I do, hmm, how can I combine it? And then I actually realized, okay, there's so much mystery that I don't even see it anymore. Um, and especially, yeah, from people from the outside world of my world, of my job world. So I was confronted many times with my family saying, yeah, how can you even do this job and friends, ex-partners, and yeah, and so on. But also colleagues um, that are working in the same field. It sometimes was a mystery to them what I actually do and also personally to myself. So I decided to make this talk very personal and I'm gonna talk about don't explain your art or your art of life. Because that's actually what helped me a lot when I decided to say, okay, I don't need to know everything about what I do myself, but other people also don't. And that helps a lot and encouraged me a lot to, um, yeah, to become a happier artist and a happier person. So today I'll make an exception because I need to explain a bit of what I do, otherwise this talk would be pointless. So um, what I, the mystery of what I do for a living. Um, so, I studied acting. I went to acting school in Berlin for three years and moved to Cologne in 2012. So, yes, on the paper I would say I'm a, I'm a certified actress. But uh, sometimes I rather feel like this. <laughs> what do I actually do for a living? Because it turned out that I don't just work as an actress, I started to do many different things. and. So for me, that's when the mystery started, when I was actually trying to make a living from what I do. And it worked after a year when I was in Cologne and I got my jobs. I could kick out all my side jobs that didn't really have to do with my art and what I learned. So, but soon I realized, okay, if you want to make money, sometimes you, yeah, you end up being a plastic bag. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but it's fun and I enjoyed it and I always um, had this feeling, okay, I don't need to be Shakespeare's Juliet because this is much more fun uh, <laughs> to play in costumes like this. It's actually a recent show I'm doing at the moment uh, for Carnival, which is unfortunately completely sold out, but good for us. <laughs> um, so I did um, a lot of stuff that wasn't really typical, like not the big plays, not chiller, not good or whatever. And then I actually ended up um, doing radio, which was for some people strange, because I mean, I'm an actress, and I think especially in Germany, sometimes that's really strange if you um, started to learn something and then you work in a different field. A lot of people, it's scary for them, this mystery to accept. Um, and that actually started because I decided to study also something else beside my acting. Um, I studied linguistics and phonetics, um, actually inspired by acting at the University of Cologne and um, languages and cultures of Africa. But that's just like my hobby, but explain that to people, this combination, it's weird. Um, and then I started out at the campus radio and ended up in Namibia at the radio station there. At Hit Radio Namibia, I worked at a German radio station and um, yeah, combined all my stuff. On the other hand, I have another passion, which is hospital clowning. Um, and I realized in drama school very quickly, oh, I kind of don't really fit in with this ballet lessons and all this dancing stuff. I, I looked like a clown, basically. <laughs> so I thought, OK, maybe I should be a clown then. And I went to Hanover, um, take workshops there uh, to become like a hospital clown for real, to have it, to learn this profession. Because it's not just the art of clowning, it's also a lot of psychology involved. <laughs> And for all the people in drama school, it was this huge mis mystery. Why is this person so weird? Why is she not, why does she want to have this red nose in her face and it's not being a normal actress? If you can even say that, a normal actress, I don't know. <laughs> but for me, it doesn't exclude the other stuff. I'm also, um, 
yeah, shooting sometimes. Um, I did a lot of children's plays, also because I worked so much with children in hospitals. And then I started to write. I wrote this play, actually, um, and, and uh, yeah, played in it. And, then, and that, that's the other mystery that came in. People were like, OK, but now you're a writer. Did you learn that? How can you be it if you didn't learn it again? Um, big mystery. I did stand-up comedy, started to write sketches for TV series like Knallerfrauen and other German comedy series. Um, and that all didn't make sense. It didn't fit together <laughs> for a lot of people. All the different jobs I did, um, walking acts, um, then again, movie, historical walk acts. And yeah, that's also from the recent show. <laughs> a lot of fun. So, but what happened then was that to me, when I was confronted with all these questions from the outside world and the inside world and other people, I started to ask all of these questions myself. I'm like, OK. I started to get scared from all these mysteries in my, in my job and in my life. So I was thinking, am I even a real actress? Why am I not famous? What is my profession? If I want to write it down on paper, what do I actually do? Am I a voice artist? Am I an actress? And then also all these other questions that I think a lot of creative people deal with and a lot of freelancers deal with. How will I actually pay my bills? It's a very practical, down-to-earth question. And obviously, it's good to ask yourself that, and you're allowed to ask that. But I think. That's all the scary mysteries that just came from everywhere. And I decided, OK, I asked myself, why am I actually still doing this job if I'm so scared of all this suddenly when I started out working? Because it works. But from all these impressions that other people put on me, I was asking myself, what is it actually what makes me happy about it? Why am I doing this? And it reminded me back of acting school. <laughs> That's me trying to fit in. <laughs> yeah. But you can't be good at something if you if it's not really your yeah, if it's not really your box or your <laughs> cupcake <laughs> paper. Um, and I remembered the job that actually makes me happy the most to break all these mysteries down, to try to take out all this these scary, scary things. What's this again? So, and a clown actually has also to do a lot with mystery. Um, you see, we're, we're hiding behind this mask a little bit, but not so much. So the people can still see our faces when we're working in hospitals so that we don't scare the children. And that's also what I wanted to say with don't explain your art or your art of life too much. Just reveal a little bit. And so that's how the clown actually came in contact with all these, these scary things for me. And it made me happy, because I don't want to say I met a lot of people in hospital where I'm saying, OK, shame they have such much more worse problems than I have. You shouldn't look at it from this point of view. But it made me really remember how lucky I am with all my little mysteries that I have. I mean. OK, maybe I won't be able to pay my bills next month. Maybe I will. But for the children in hospital, the present is a complete mystery. The nurse walks in. The doctor walks in. They don't know what's happening to them. What's the scary machine with all the blinking lights? So for them, that's actually the present is completely scary and a mystery, a scary mystery. For the parents, it's the future. Will my child be healthy again? And then I also worked for um, people with dementia. And for them, the past is a complete mystery. They forget the present as well and the future. But um, that's what the clown meets them. And that's so beautiful, because the clown wanders the whole time between those two worlds, between this mystery and, yeah, and, and between this, this curiosity also to say, OK, I don't know what this is. Oh, it's a chair. I look at it, and the clown sees in the chair many different things and enjoys all the mysteries that he or she doesn't know about it. So that's when I started to transform all my scary mystery questions into exciting and, and happy ones. What is it about this job that 
yeah, that's, that's positive. And there's so many surprises and things and so many angles from where you can actually see what you're doing and so much potential in your job. And yeah, I, I trust in my lifestyle since I, since I started to combine all these things and just said, look, it's actually, it's a good combination of those two things. So I have actually a little, it's a little magic trick for children, but I think it um, symbolizes quite well but what, um, what I mean with those two kinds of mysteries. So we have the scary mysteries, the gray colors. That's an empty bag. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you might find it silly, but um, for children in hospital, this, this works a lot also to take off sorrows and, and, and to scare them less. And this is the positive mysteries. So if we combine them and sprinkle a little bit of magic dust over it, <laughs> a little bit more, sometimes life is very scary, <laughs> and shake it all off. We just shake it all off, combine all of this, and the outcome is going to be love. You should just embrace your mysteries. <laughs> and I know it's, yeah, it's maybe, it's not for adults. I'm a magician for children, but um, I thought for today, this is actually a very nice symbol of what to do with all these mysteries. As soon as you start embracing them, they, they, they're not so scary anymore. Some of them are, but not so much. And then, I, yeah, I stopped also explaining a lot about what I do to my, to my family, to friends, when I first met people. Because if you say all of the things that you do, people get confused. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay, because we're all sometimes confused with what we do. And um, I found this little meme, which is quite cute. Um, yeah, I think if I would tell my five-year-old self today what I'm doing, that girl would be like, yes, I can't wait to grow up. <laughs> this is going to be amazing. Um, and I think I'm also on a pretty good way um, to impress my 85-year-old self later. Um, yeah, and, but there's one thing still that, that you need, because obviously you need to marketing, do marketing about yourself and you can't just not explain what you do because otherwise you won't be able to work. So I asked myself just one question. I took all the scary mysteries out, the happy mysteries in, and tried to find a foundation for, for what I actually want to do. And that's also where my partner and now fiancé came in because we, were, we met in Namibia when I was working there at Hit Radio. And we were thinking, okay, where are we actually going to live? Could I live in Namibia? Hmm. And I was thinking, yeah, but just radio. They, have, they don't even really have a real theater. They have one theater, but not with a real ensemble. So there wasn't really much work opportunity for me. And I was thinking, okay, what do I want to do? And he asked me, what do you want to do if you break it down to one sentence? And then I was thinking, hmm, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to be a radio presenter only. I don't want to be an actress only. And then I found this sentence for me, for myself, to say, this is exactly what I want to do. And this is what I explain to people. And the rest can be a mystery. Sometimes I explain more if they ask me stuff. Sometimes I explain less. But this is exactly, I want to entertain. And no matter what I'm going to do in my life, this must always be the foundation of, of what I'm doing. So that's the mystery of how I ended up moving to Africa, <laughs> because I'm actually going to yeah, leave Cologne end of February and move to Namibia permanently. But I found something that I can do there. Because yeah, if you don't fit into a box, then just don't. <laughs> and I decided, OK. I studied African studies, but I don't really need to do something with it. It obviously helps me now a lot um, to make it less scary and less mysterious to move there. And Africa is always something that's being mystified a lot in the media and for a lot of people. So I decided I just found my own company there, which combines <laughs> my slogan, I want to entertain. So I founded the Fun Factory there and just invented a field of job for myself. Because if it doesn't exist, just make it up. And it's so much easier to explain it to people. 
Yeah. So the rest is mystery behind it, but that's the foundation and the, and the cover around it, what people see. And if I say, okay, I'm the CEO of the Fun Factory, what do you guys do? Oh, we produce entertainment. Oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> and I can still do all the stuff that I'm doing without struggling to, to doubt what I'm doing. So the first thing, yeah, I was starting up last year was also a magic show, which is, um, was quick kicking in quite nicely for the children. And I think that next picture is really symbolizing what I want to give to you guys to take home today. So I'm doing this magic trick there. And it was in a living room of a friend's house. And the children invited many kids over. And just look at these faces. Like, their jaws dropped, like literally. And OK, that was just like the prototype of the show. It wasn't, I don't want to say it was bad, but it was, it was simple. I just did it to try it out the first time. And they were so impressed from all age groups. And even the parents are just smiling and yeah, again, the trick is just the cover, the outside, and the mystery inside. If I would explain it to the kids, they would be so unsatisfied <laughs> and so unhappy. <laughs> and I think that is exactly, um, if, you, if you think about it, about your creative business and your job, try to find a nice cover for it, a nice foundation, and don't explain too much about it. It will make it so much easier for everyone and, and satisfy people a lot more. Because, yeah, there's stuff that they can, they can still wonder about. So just give mystery a try. And whatever you're doing, it's about your life. It's about what you want to do. And always remember, you also don't have to have a clue the whole time. But just don't reveal it. If you have your foundation and your cover, the scary mysteries will just um, can go home. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for listening.